will be a new pandemic preparedness program launched under RIE 2025. And it's called Prepare. Can you just give us a bit of an idea about what kind of projects it could entail? Let me first start by saying that uh, the research community in Singapore has contributed very significantly to the uh, public health response to COVID-19. And uh, there were uh, three main uh, reasons why we were able to do so. Uh, the first is, of course, the capability level in Singapore has been developed uh, over the last two decades. Secondly, uh, there are now uh, very strong networks of researchers that span uh, the public health, the clinical people, and the research community. That's very important for an outbreak containment type of response in terms of R&D. And the third is uh, that there was some, there's quite a bit of work done to prepare protocols beforehand and get them pre-approved uh, so that when the epidemic strikes, you can immediately respond. Uh, so we've uh, learned uh, also from uh, the uh, COVID experience and uh, the goal is for us to take these learnings and um, use them to uh, design a, a new uh, research uh, program that will span for the next five years, which will further strengthen our ability to uh, do R&D to help with uh, future epidemics and outbreaks. So the uh, main goals uh, for this uh, program would be firstly, to uh, develop a uh, more explicit um, national R&D program for epidemic research. So this will allow us to better coordinate and prioritize the different things that we do. Uh, the second is uh, to build some enablers uh, for research, and I can speak a bit more about them, mainly samples, data, and the ability to help different researchers from different disciplines to work together. Uh, thirdly, uh, to uh, strengthen our ability to uh, take uh, research discoveries and convert them into actual diagnostic products, treatments, uh, and so on. Uh, and fourthly, to uh, uh, strengthen our ability to uh, work with uh, centers in the region, in our region, Southeast Asia, to uh, carry out uh, clinical research on uh, infectious diseases of uh, public health interest. So, so that's uh, the gist of the uh, program. So, Prof, in a nutshell, is it right if I summarize as saying that, you know, with the National uh, Research Program on Pandemic Preparedness, it would put Singapore in a better state to firstly uh, make all available data or make data available to researchers here so everyone can get started uh, on, on research into a novel pathogen and it could expedite um, the way diagnostic tests are commercialized and rolled out and this could have also implications on therapeutics and vaccines for the future. And then, yes, I think that indeed is the case. So this program is meant to be a translational program mainly in other words, uh, there will uh, continue to be uh, funding for basic research, uh, for uh, investigator-related research. So those things will continue. Uh, what this uh, new program would do would be to uh, build the enablers in terms of data, tissue, uh, pathogen materials, as well as the networks uh, that are working around infectious diseases or public health interests and to uh, link these up uh, to produce things that would be useful for outbreak control, such as uh, better surveillance, uh, better understanding of uh, how epidemic is spreading or being controlled, uh, faster uh, timelines to uh, producing diagnostics, faster timelines to test new therapeutics, to develop new therapeutics, faster timelines to test and maybe to develop vaccines. So this uh, program will uh, support a translational facing type of uh, activity, which will uh, then better meet the needs of uh, Ministry of Health and public health agencies in epidemic control. Can you tell us a bit more about, you know, what are some possible infrastructure that could arise from this research program? I mean, you mentioned uh, about the need to get hold of samples, for instance. In order for us to really do research well, we need many different types of expertise. 
and uh, they need to get access to data, they need access to clinical samples uh, like x-rays, sputum and other samples and they need uh, access sometimes to uh, viral materials. And uh, for COVID, uh, there was actually uh, quite good coordination um, uh, amongst NCID and a number of hospitals to start collecting this tissue. And that was one of the reasons why we were able to do research uh, more quickly. But it was a uh, informal, a more informal program. And uh, so under the PREPARE research program, we will uh, provide funding to uh, build more uh, long-term core infrastructure that will enable this to be done for different types of infectious diseases of public health interest and, and not just COVID alone. So this will include uh, being able to uh, securely store uh, data and be able to uh, securely and under confidential conditions uh, to make it accessible to uh, approved users and researchers and also access to uh, clinical samples and also uh, biological samples relating to the virus. So just as an example, even in COVID, when we were developing the diagnostic tests and the antibody tests, we were uh, lucky that we actually had uh, some old antibody, uh, some serum from patients from the 2003 SARS outbreak. <laughs> and uh, we were able to use these uh, samples to help us to uh, validate uh, whether the test kits we we're developing had cross-reactivity against uh, SARS, uh, the 2003 SARS. So those kinds of samples uh, can be very useful when uh, we are dealing with uh, current pathogens. So will this prepare program also boost Singapore's capability to develop vaccines for you know, the disease access of the future? A second area where the uh, prepare program would focus on is to uh, bring together researchers from uh, different institutions and different disciplines together into cooperative networks. So these cooperative networks will focus around things like uh, therapeutics, vaccines and diagnostics. And uh, the cooperative will do a few things. Uh, firstly, it will bring many different disciplines together. So if I just talk first about diagnostics and I'll come to vaccines in a minute, for diagnostics, uh, we need uh, people who know the biology, but we can also uh, benefit from people who do uh, bioengineering, microfluidics, and uh, sensor uh, sensing types of uh, systems. So by bringing them together, we can uh, expedite the discovery of new research types of uh, tests. Then we, uh, in the cooperative, we will also link them up to platforms that will assist with productization. So the Diagnostic Development Hub uh, in ASTAR has uh, developed a lot of expertise to convert research diagnostic tests into uh, products that can not just uh, be clinically validated, they can be approved by HSA and other regulators. And then we've taken it one step further to manufacture them, some in Singapore, some uh, for Singapore. So, so the cooperative brings together a whole set of skills, not just scientific skills, but skills in developing uh, discoveries into products. So in a similar way for vaccines, uh, we are uh, not going to be able to uh, develop every single type of expertise required for vaccine development, but uh, we certainly can strengthen some of the basic uh, research uh, platforms that could be useful for vaccine development. So uh, today, of course, RNA vaccines are very much in the news, but uh, they are based on uh, just a more general set of uh, technologies that make use of uh, RNA. And uh, so if you wanted to uh, build capabilities in uh, vaccine development, we could uh, develop areas like uh, RNA and DNA platforms that can be used for different things. It can be, they can be used for cancer research, but they can also be pivoted to address uh, infectious diseases if uh, the need arises. So developing these platforms would uh, provide us greater 
uh, ability to uh, bring together the right expertise if there's another outbreak. 